For years now, lost media has been a hot topic on the internet. Typically, people have their favorite pieces. Typically well-known pieces like Hidogata, Clockman, or Metropolis. Still, there are many more pieces that, while not as well-known, deserve not only equal time in the spotlight, but just as much chance to be found. These are those pieces. This is Lesser Known Lost Media. Welcome back to the channel, Chimera Crew, and welcome to Volume 70 of Lesser Known Lost Media. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, there is a little bit of an update to our format. So how this used to work is I would start with four pieces of family-friendly, uh, safe-for-work lost media, take a brief ad break, and then end with a final spicy piece of lost media. Well, now that the channel is monetized and there are mid-roll ads, we will not be taking the break between the fourth and fifth pieces of media. There will be, you know, ads throughout the video. I do thank you for watching them, but other than that, the format has not changed. We're going to start with four family-friendly, safe-for-work, pieces of lost media that you just don't hear about all that often on YouTube, and then we will end with a fifth, spicier piece. All right, all that being said, let's get started. At number one, we have Aguexa, a lost Brazilian musical film from 1909. Aguexa, the Geisha in English, is a 1909 Brazilian musical film directed by Julio Ferrez and produced by William E. Sia. It was a sound film with actors dubbing themselves live behind the screen. The cast included Jose Goncalves Leonardo and Ismenia Matias, both of whom had already acted in the film No Entacio Chigo de Viaguim considered the first comedy film in Brazil. In March of 1910, the film was shown in a color copy with the negatives being hand-painted at Pathé Ferrez. Based on uh, a homonymous operetta, this film, in addition to a good range of actors, featured more than 30 extras. The libretto is curious and entirely different from the play, with scenes of great effect which enhance the operetta, which is already interesting in itself. It was released at the Cinema Rio Branco in Rio de Janeiro on November 8th of 1909. As to the plot, according to the newspaper Journal do Brasil, the film was a cinematic opera of oriental customs. Unfortunately, no copy or any fragment of the film has survived, with only two images remaining found in newspapers of the time. Uh, this one is particularly interesting to me as one of my favorite operettas is The Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan, so a cinematic comedy opera of, um, you know, oriental customs. Uh, uh, as seen through the lens of, Bra of a Brazilian opera company uh, would have been very interesting to see. And uh, the concept of them actually being behind the screen performing their lines is even more interesting. It's too bad this one's not around anymore. I mean, again, I, it, I hopefully they would have also made a, rec a cast recording of the soundtrack, so to speak. But, uh, you know, I wish this one was still around. I think it'd be very interesting to see. At number two, we have Bobby's Girl, lost footage from an unfinished animated film from the 1980s. So Bobby's Girl is an unfinished animated film produced by Ralph Bakshi and John Crickfalusi. Bakshi saw the potential in Crickfalusi and decided to work on a project with him. The film was to be a parody of 1980s teen films like Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club. When Bakshi pitched the film to Jeff Sagansky, the president of TriStar Pictures production at the time, he was given $150,000 for production of the film. This funding prompted Bakshi to move back to Los Angeles. However, the duo was, in a, was evidently unable to fully produce the film by the time Sagansky left TriStar, which forced Bakshi, Bakshi sorry, to repitch it to TriStar. The new executives didn't see the appeal, however, and ended up cutting off his finances. Later, Bobby's Girl was reworked into a potential primetime series titled Susie's In Love, but this also attracted little attention, leaving the entire project dead. Artwork for the film can be seen in Bakshi's book Unfiltered, the complete, complete Rolf Bakshi, as well as on his official website and on the blog of animator Jim Smith, who also worked on the film. It's unknown if any actual form of animation has been made, however. This cancelled film should not be confused with the 1985 anime OVA Bobby Ni Kubitaki that is known in English as Bobby's Girl and also as Bobby's In Deep. They are two different films. This one is interesting to me just because it does seem like both Bakshi and Crick Felushi have a lot of projects that just never really got 
finished or, you know, were underrated or were cut for time. There seems to be a lot of unfinished things left on the table with both of them. So when a lost piece of lost media comes along that involves the both of them, that is very interesting. Some people just seem destined to uh, be for, for this kind of stuff. At number three, we have Bumpity Boo, partially found Saban Entertainment English dub of Hey Bumboo anime series from 1989. Bumpity Boo is an English adaptation of the 1985 anime Hey Bumboo. Uh, produced by Saban Entertainment in 1989, this dub, dub covered 129 of the 130 episode series and aired on Canada's Family Channel and Australian television in the mid 90s. The original Japanese score was omitted and it was replaced with an American score by Haim Saban and Shuki Levy. In 1990, it was released on VHS for the first time by Celebrity Home Entertainment's Just For Kids division. Saban's license for the show expired on February 28th of 2007. So if it was released on VHS, well, what's missing? Well, according to the Lost Media Wiki, as of 2018, none of the English dubbed episodes were available on places like YouTube, Dailymotion, or Archive. Although the dub could be found on websites like eBay and Amazon, it was worth noting that YouTuber The Previews Guy VHS Openings uploaded the opening and closing of the VHS releases of Bumpity Boo, including Bumpity Boo is Born and The Desert Adventure. However, the German dub was based on this dub and Heim Saban and Shuki Levy score was left intact. Also, some of the German dubbed episodes can be uh, found on YouTube, uh, which was at the time the closest way to watch the English version of the show. However, in 2000, uh, on, on August 23rd of 2019, YouTuber Grant Heyman uploaded the full English dubbed VHS tape of Bumpity Boo the Radmobile. And on May 11th of 2020, YouTuber Alex Fitzer uh, planned to upload the full English VHS tape of Bumpity Boo Bumpity Bo Boo is Born at some point in the future. Um, on August 1st of 2020, the full VHS tape of Bumpity Boo is Born was uploaded on YouTube by Caster Retro, albeit in very rough shape uh, visually due to the age of the tape. We then got another update that in early January of 2022, YouTuber Caster Retro, aka Alex Fitzer, uploaded new versions of the three most commonly found tapes on eBay. Bumpity Boo is Born, The Radmobile, and The Desert Adventure. The Desert Adventure is just a part of The Radmobile, but on different tape. So basically, as of right now in 2024, we have three, apparently three episodes out of 129 that were dubbed that we can access, which still means there is a lot of lost media out there of this series. While I had never heard of this series, Saban was responsible for a good chunk of my childhood, uh, and definitely uh, it is probably a, a good point that a lot of kids in the, 80, in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, this was a part of theirs, and as such, there is probably a high demand for the media to be found. Childhood lost media is always popular and it's always sought after. And the thing is, is considering when this came out, the 80s and 90s, there is probably a lot of merch out there that people can find and hopefully upload. I don't know if all of the 129 episodes were released on VHS, but hopefully quite a few of them were. And hopefully that there are still enough in good enough condition that they can be ripped and uh, put up on the internet. All right, coming in at number four, I have one that was requested over about a year ago, actually, by It's All Pain, No Gain, uh, who has requested Highlander 3030, which is a partially found comic based on the television and film franchise from 2015. Highlander is a film and television franchise created by screenwriter Gregory Whidden. The franchise began with Highlander, a 1986 film starring Christopher Lambert, to date, there have been four live-action films, two live-action television series, one anime film, one anime television series, one animated web series, 15 novels, five comic books, and two video games. The premise of the franchise is immortal beings who fight one another to be the last one standing who will rule the world. Immortals can only be killed by chopping off their heads. The primary television series and later movies focused on an immortal named Duncan MacLeod. In 2015, Emerald Star Comics published the first of what was to be a new Highlander comic series titled Highlander 3030. 
Emerald Star Comics appears to have been unable to secure a distributor, so it is unclear whether any physical copies were distributed. Digital copies were sold, but also made free to download at some point. A variant cover, issue number 1B, appears to have been issued and possibly sold on the Emerald Star Comics website. A collector's edition was also offered for sale. The second in the series was in production but never issued, and Emerald Star Comics no longer exists. The first issue is no longer sold in either physical or digital form on any primary marketplace and, not, and cannot be found in the secondary marketplace. The plot of this comic for Highlander 3030 takes place, of course, in the year 3030, as the name suggests. It focuses on a now 1,400-year-old Duncan MacLeod living on a mining colony in Europa. Duncan MacLeod's centrally long sabbatical is interrupted by the sudden appearance of a new immortal. Roused back into the battle by the ruthless immortal Krav, Duncan fights to save Annika as she learns the truth about what she is. As to the availability, no version of Issue 1, either Number 1A, Number 1B, nor the Collector's Edition is commercially available. drive through Comics and Comicol Comixology no longer sell it and have taken down the old listing. The issues cannot be found in any secondary marketplace. I actually used to really enjoy the Highlander TV series. I loved the original Highlander movie. Not all Highlander media is created equally, but at the very least, uh, you know, this was, uh, this seems like this could have been a cool story. Comic book, definitely a good, uh, a good avenue of media for Highlander. And I wish this one, one could be found and two had continued as it was intended to, because it does sound like it could have been a pretty cool story. All right, guys, time for that spicy piece of media. I hope you've been enjoying the video up up so far. Uh, thank you for watching any ads that have come on during your view. And so let's get to that spicy piece. So for our spicy piece today, we have cans without labels, partially found backer rewards from Kickstarter campaign by Ren and Stimby creator from 2012 to 2019. Just so you know, this article has been flagged spicy due to references of schmexual abuse and schmexual metaphilia. I'll be honest, I do not love having to watch my language now that I'm monetized. That, that kind of sucks, but let's get into it. For the second time in this episode, John Crick Felucci appears. Now in 20, 2012, Crick Felucci, who created the Nickelodeon series The Ren and Stimpy Show, would create a Kickstarter campaign for a short film named Cans Without Labels. The campaign promised rewards such as t-shirts, pencil toppers, digital desktop toys, and other things. It ultimately lasted until 2013, and from then on, the production of the animation began. However, due to troubles with the production of the short, it resulted in most of the backer rewards to not be delivered, and after seven years of production, Cans Without Labels would release in 2019 with negative reception due to John's schmegual abuse allegations being exposed in 2018, and for the animation being low quality with multiple issues, ending John Crick Felucci's animation career. The last update made by John about the project was on May 27th of 2019, and since then no additional updates would be made about the rewards, resulting in some of them being completely lost. Now, here's a brief overview of the rewards that were, you know, mentioned and promised on the page. For $1 backers, they would receive a copy of the short film, and it's unknown if it has any differences compared to the version posted on YouTube by John himself. Now, if you were a $10 backer, you would be the first in your neighborhood to own one of John's new digital toys, tear it out of the virtual package, roll it around, click it in sensitive areas, and watch it do something stupid and lovable. So, $10 backers would receive a downloadable link to a desktop toy which could be shared to other people online. As for the $20 backers, well they were promised, you can get a pack of three of my fancy ass new digital toys to collect and trade with friends from many lands through the internets. So they would be given a downloadable link to a pack of three desktop toys which could be shared with other people online. As to the $50 backers, well, $50 backers would receive a DVD copy of the short featuring an animatic for a Ren and Stimpy short that was supposed to be released as a special feature for the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. However, the short was never produced, with the only thing finished being the animatic, which would later be posted online by a backer named I Am a Real Horse. 
Now, as the availability of everything, due to the lack of activity from the Kickstarter, it's safe to say that the desktop toys will likely be lost forever, with only animated GIFs, videos, and images being available. It is unknown if John still has the files for them, and if he is willing to give them to his backers. This one is especially interesting to me because, again, it is not only the second time that uh, Crick Felucci has shown up on uh, this episode, but he actually made an appearance in our 69th episode previously. Uh, you can check that one out uh, for him and uh, another animator and their not-so-safe-for-work uh, cartoon. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, I said that Crick Felucci seems to be one of those people that was destined to have all kinds of projects not come to fruition. And while that can seem sad and unfortunate, he's also apparently a creep, so, you know, good riddance as far as I'm concerned. But it seems funny to me that someone who was undergoing some allegations, whose reputation was being dragged through the mud, uh, and had also had a project in the works where he promised several things to people, um, it is surprising that he would release such a low quality piece of garbage like that's not the way to save your career and in fact you know combined the allegations combined with the uh, poor release of his work really did end his animation career uh, and you know that's I mean I'm not really sad to see him go considering he's a creep I've mentioned before it is not easy for me to separate an artist uh, an artist from their art so you know I can't really support anything made by a guy who would do such horrible things but I do think it's funny that you know even before all that this guy just seemed it seems like this guy's stuff being lost is just karma for his deeds and uh, then he got lazy so um, you know what uh, interesting but good riddance all right guys that is our video i know i said there would be a giveaway announced today but guys there's already a giveaway going on uh on another video from last week that nobody at the time of recording has entered has entered so i'm gonna go ahead and extend the giveaway and also post it here so you can enter the giveaway on this video on screen there are three miniatures that you can potentially win all are zombified versions of dc and marvel comics characters we have captain cold from dc comics kazar from marvel comics and gambit from marvel comics of x-men fame please enter one of the following phrases depending on which miniature you would like to win. If you would like to win the Captain Cold Mini, please enter the phrase Brain Freeze in the, com in the comments. If you would like to win Kazar, please enter the phrase Plunder. And if you would like to win the Zombie Gambit miniature, please enter the phrase Remember in the comments. comments. You, can also put, you can also enter to win multiple miniatures. Uh, feel free. Or if you just want to win a mini and don't care which one it is, just enter the phrase give me a mini in the comments and you'll be entered to win one of these guys. Originally, this giveaway was going to end uh, on uh, tomorrow, but we're going to extend it. So you have until Friday of next week, noon Eastern Standard Time, to enter by commenting one of the four phrases and you'll be entered to win one of these three miniatures. Thanks for watching, everybody, uh, and if you are feeling so kind, please consider joining the Patreon, becoming a YouTube channel member, or heading on over to eBay and Mercari, links in the description, and possibly buying one of my minis. Until next time, I'm Mr. Sean, this is Chimera Miniatures, and I hope that you alpha great day, and an even beta tomorrow. Bye bye Welcome to the show, we hope you'll stick around. Mr. Sean is here to entertain the crowd We've got a bit of everything, cause everything's allowed Chimera Miniatures is here to stay, we hope we make you proud Welcome to the show, we hope you'll stick around Mr. Sean is here to entertain the crowd We've got a bit of everything, cause everything's allowed Chimera Miniatures is here to stay, we hope we make you proud